All right, so now we're gonna deal with the tie rod. So in order to take out the tie rod, we have to take out this pin right here. So this pin, when it's new, it looks like this. We actually have a ton of spears. Okay, <laughs> my dad showed me that in order to take it out, we have to push this down. Okay, that was a hard piece of plastic. So this is what they look like new. So basically what I wanna do is they go into a slot and then they get bent out sort of like this. So in order to take that out, we're going to take pliers and then we're going to straighten them out. Now, when you try to take it out and it breaks, then if it breaks on the outside, there's no, it's not really a worry, but if it breaks on the inside, you're gonna have to drill it out. In our case, we don't wanna break it because we don't have a drill that's small enough to uh, take that out because most of them are broken. I mean, a drill bit, but it should hopefully be relatively easy. And if we, even if we do break it, we can still replace it. On this side, we're gonna pull it or we're gonna knock it out. Hold on, let me just make sure this is really straight. All right, so we're gonna use a hammer to knock it out from this side, and then we're going to try to pull it out from the other side using a gripper. But I mean, even if we try it this way, I'm pretty sure it's just gonna get bent. Okay, so that's what I talked about. It's just gonna get bent. Gotta make sure it's as straight as possible when we try to take it out. Oh, wait. It's because it's not facing the uh, direction of the hole. So now, we should be good. Let me try. No, oh, that's just breaking it. Alright, so a car this long, 170,000 miles, it doesn't matter. We ended up breaking it because it's rusted already. But eventually, we got to a point where breaking it actually did help because if we break it, we're able to hit it without it redistributing the force. So that means we are now able to force it back enough so that we can pull it out. And I don't want to bend this part out because if I do, that's going to be troublesome. Oh, <sighs> I'm angry at this piece now, but this is what it looks like. Fortunately, we can replace those. Let me see what this one is looks like. Yeah, eh, close, close enough. So, we got the clip out. Yeah, clip out. So you might be thinking, what's the purpose of that of that pin? Now, or clip. Now, the reason that that pin is there is in order to secure this castle nut right here. All right, so I take it back. I was looking at it, and I was like, that doesn't look like a castle, and it turns out it's not, it's not a castle nut. This is what a castle nut looks like. It has these little things in down here that makes it look like a rook and chess. This one does not have any of those ridges. So we're going to use a breaker bar in order to take it out. Ready, tidy, lucky, lucky. So that means if I want to loosen it like this, I have to flip the direction. So that means I pull it towards me. There we go. Always gotta use a bit of logic when you're loosening things. We're gonna take it out with the impact driver in order to save some time. All right, so I said I'd save a little time with the impact driver, but it turns out the vibration of taking out this axle nut really did it a number. So we're going to try using the Milwaukee. Of course, I can never forget this tool. It's my favorite. And never mind, it's not my favorite. I mean, now it's my favorite because you can still ratchet it, but. You win some, you lose some. So, that's what the, the nut looks like. It's obviously not a castle nut, but we think that the next one will be. Let's check it out. So after this, we're going to force this out by pushing it up. So originally my dad would do something like knocking it from the bottom in order to loosen it, but because this is an old car, that's probably not a good idea because it's probably gonna break. Let me correct myself. What, he, what I meant to say, or what he corrected me after I said it was, instead of hitting it from the bottom of the nut, I mean the bolt. He meant he means that we should hit it from the, the the knuckle, and that vibration will free up the um the piece that's attached to it. It's not it's not coming to me. But anyway, that piece attached to it will be able to be freed up by the vibration. So instead of knocking it from the bottom, we're gonna use a special tool right here. Alright, so by the way, that part's called the tie rod. I knew it was gonna come to me, but 
Of course, it's called the tie rod because this is the tie rod bolt that the, the tie rod bolt that we're taking out. I know some mechanics might be saying that. Come on, just get over it with it. But the point of this video is not just for me to fix my brother's car, but also my dad to teach me how to use these tools. So the part that we have here, or the tool that we have here, is called the tie rod and pitman arm puller. What we're now focusing on is the tie rod puller part. And in order to use this tool right here, you can see that it has this sort of vice-like um, screw and it has these uh, C-shaped claws. So basically what this do is, does is it fits under the contact point of the tie rod and the bolt. And then you want to take this um, screw here and position it under. We're going to directly under and then we're going to tighten it onto that bolt. Essentially what should happen is as we spin this uh, screw, it should move upwards and then it should push this out. So let's do it. All right, so here's the demonstration. Oh yeah, by the way, I, I forgot to mention, this has a socket under it. Or maybe I did mention it actually. <laughs> so, if we move it counterclockwise, then you'll see that the screw moves up and it pushes this screw right here. It's very important that we have it centered so that it keeps pushing that screw and not pushing off. So we're switching to position because if you can see, it was actually pushing the rubber and we didn't want to break that rubber. It's probably going to be brittle. So now that we have a change of position, we should be able to push it out. Cool. Oh, there we go. Look at that. The tie rod is now out and with the rubber intact too. Good job. I'm proud of this tool. And I think it was like $15 uh, at Harbor Freight Tools, so pretty good worth. Yeah, I say it's a pretty good worth because if we broke that rubber, we'd also have to replace it. And I know we don't want to charge my brother Osfer too much, so the fact that we had this was a godsend. Okay, so now we're going to take out the bottom bowl, and that's connected to the ball joint. Let's take, a look, let's take a look at what we're taking out. So as I mentioned earlier, we're dealing with a castle nut right here. It, it looks like 